Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. We have a saying here at the Wayward Outreach that once you watch once, you're now part of the family. We know that God is ready to do something amazing in your life, so check out today's service. I can't wait to jump into this topic, Pastor Markle, and if you have a notebook, take out your notebook at this time, get out your, um, your, your Bibles. Again, on the app, um, the notes are on the app. Um, we actually have fill in the blanks. You can um, get involved with tonight's teaching, but I really think, Pastor Markle, this teaching tonight is really going to transform lives. It's really going to change us forever. Um, th if there's any, ever been a time where we're being challenged, it's right now. And this is actually our title for tonight. I want you to write this down, or again, it's right there on that. Here's the title. How to make it through challenging times. Right. How do we make it out, Pastor? I love this topic. I can't wait to dive in it. There's a lot of people right now that are just going through challenging times right now. Yeah, and, and, and what we're going to do as, as we cover this subject, I'm going to I'm gonna give you two seasons of life. Two seasons of life, and then we're going to give you four steps or four things to overcome or get through difficult times. So two, two seasons of life, and then four steps to get through difficult times. Yeah. I love what you wrote down. Here's a note. We will all go through these two seasons of life. It is part of life on earth. Can you describe that or explain that, Pastor? Okay, so when we, we, life has ups and it has downs. Right. It has peaks right. or mountaintops, and then it has valleys. You shouldn't be surprised that you go to peaks to valleys, peaks to valleys, because it's part of life. Wow. Now, the victories are won not on the peaks. You right. celebrate on the right. peaks, but the victories, the advancement, the growth, the victories, all that, all the good stuff, the promotions all happen in the valleys. So that's why the Bible says you count a joy when you're following diverse trials and tribulations, knowing that the testing of your faith will produce patience. And it, is, it says, let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. What he's saying is that trial you should be happy about because the trial is not meant to break you. The trial is meant to promote you. So we, so we have two seasons, and we love the first season, but we need to learn how to love and operate in the second season. But let's talk about the first season, and what we're going to do is focus on Job. Job is an expert on going through a difficult time, and the Bible has given us the story of Job because it's really a story of someone going through the worst time you could ever imagine, and I don't even think anybody on earth has gone through a time as bad as Job has and he got through it, yes, he and he's going to show us how to get through it. Hey, man, so I let's go to it. first season, Robert. I love it. So again, the title, How to Make It Through Challenging Times. Now we're going to go over the two seasons in life. Season number one, Pastor Mark, we wrote down, victorious and blessed seasons. These are seasons when we're on top of the world. These are seasons when the money is rolling in. Everything we're doing, it seems like we're succeeding. It feels like there's little to no spiritual warfare, everyone is healthy, relationships are flourishing, everything is going according to plan. Season number one, victorious and blessed seasons. Yeah, in this, feel, in this season, you're feeling good, you're looking good, yeah. and you're doing good. That's that season. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a season of victorious, it's a victorious and blessed yeah. season. Yeah. And let's look at that season in Job's life. In Job chapter one, verse three, it says, there was once a man named Job who lived in the land of, of us. Now, there was, there was, what the scripture is saying, this is a real story of a real man. It says, he was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God and stayed away from evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep. That's a lot of sheep. 3,000 camels. I've never seen 3,000 camels. I've seen one or two at a time. 500 teams of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and he had many servants. It, he was, in fact, the richest person in the, in the entire area. So this guy had it going on like the break of dawn. Everything was working for Job. He had the money. He had the family. He had, he had the, the donkeys. He had the, the camels. And back in those days... It, remember, if you had camels, you had to be able to 
take care of the camels, yeah. take care of the donkeys, take care of the 7,000 sheep. That means this guy had everything that he needed to take care of all these animals, and he was considered massively rich. He was like a billionaire in the hood. Yeah, he, was. he was that guy. So we look at his first season, everything's great. But in this season, there's little to no testing. You're not being, it's wow. little, they're not saying you're being tested, but it's little to no testing. You're cruising in life. Now, wow. we really don't know how strong you are until you have adversity. Right. So the first yeah. season is a victorious and blessed yeah. season. How many enjoy those seasons when they come? Oh man, they're Love good. It. Love but it. life is not just those seasons. Wow. Season number two. Let's like go to that. season number two. And like two. what you said earlier, again, we will go through these two seasons of life. It is part of life on earth. Yeah. So you'll go through victorious times and now season, season number, two. number two. And you can experience these seasons throughout your whole life. Season number two, challenging and warfare seasons. Can you explain that, Pastor? Well, these are the seasons where your money dries up. Things are not going as planned. Loss of job, sickness, persecution, relationships are falling apart, feeling depressed, business is struggling, your children aren't living right, running, you're running into a wall of resistance, it seems like you can't get a breakthrough, nothing looks like it's growing or improving, wave after wave of bad news, it appears that everything is going from bad to worse. Wow. Job also experienced this season... And the whole book of Job is based on season number two. Right. Now, it doesn't end on season number two, but the majority of the book is talking about season yeah. number two because he goes from this season back to a victorious and blessed season. But let's, let's look in Job chapter 1, verse 13 through 22. It describes Job's wow. challenging and warfare season. Here it goes. Job chapter 1, 13 through 22, the challenge and warfare season. One day... When Job's sons and daughters were feasting at the oldest, older, oldest brother's house, a messenger arrived at Job's home with this news. Your oxen were plowing with the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabaeans raided us, they stole all the animals and killed all the farmhands. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another message, messenger arrived with this news. The fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the shepherds. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, a third messenger arrived with this news. Three bands from the Chaldean raiders have stolen your camels and killed your servants. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. It's like one thing after, after, after another after, after, after another. <laughs> It kind of explains stop. 2020 right now just a little bit. <laughs> it's like I'm scared to turn on the news for five minutes. It's one thing after another. This really explains where we're at. While he was speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were feasting in their older brother's home. Suddenly a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed and all your children are dead. I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. And this all happened in one day. Wow. You're talking about changing seasons. Man. And, and this, this season just changed. The other day, so yeah. my, one of my daughters said, officially, this is fall. <laughs> yeah. and, and officially, a season changed in one day in Job's life. He literally lost everything, all his kids, all his servants, all his animals, all his riches in one day. Wow. Now, Job gets through this season, season number two. He gets through it. And what we're going to do is discuss this story. And we're going to just look at a few verses on how he overcame or how he overcame a challenging season. If he did it, that's why the book is written, we can do it. We just need to learn how to fight. We need to learn how to praise our way through difficult times. Is there anybody want to learn how to get through a difficult time? So you're no longer fearing a difficult time. 
you are looking a difficult time in the eye and says, I face difficult times just like you. And every single difficult time I face, I've overcome with God's help. And this one too will be overcome. Just like David said, I faced the lion. I faced the bear. Now, Goliath, you uncircumcised Philistine. Those lions and bears couldn't take me out. You're surely not going to take me out. I'm used. I've been trained for warfare. I've been trained for battle. I've been trained for seasons like this. God's not giving me more than I can handle. I am ready for this season and I'm going to overcome and I'm going to come out on top. Amen. I love that. Whatever situation you're facing right now, God is on the rescue. He's going to take you out. I love this. So let's answer this question, Pastor Marco. How did Job respond to challenging times? Here's Job chapter 1, verse 20 and 22. He just got all the bad news. He lost everything in one day. His source of income, his children, everything. I want to say, so, I wanna say yep. something. Uh, right now, what we're, what we're doing is we're going to discuss Job's response. Yeah. Like, you can't always control what happens to you, right. but you're responsible. I'm responsible for my response, and your response is going to determine your outcome. That's, right. That's why. So, so right now, we're going to see Job's response. response. Right. Wow, I love that. Job chapter 1, verse 20, 20 through 22. Job stood up and tore his robe in grief. Then he shaved his head and fell to the ground to worship he worshiped wow verse 21 he worshiped after all the bad news he said i you, you would have thought he would have started cussing yes yeah, so cussing exactly cussing <laughs> so, getting mad right. going to tantrum yeah, going no, crazy he at this time he worshiped. he worshiped verse 21 is and he goes into this prayer look at this mature prayer i've never prayed this look at this mature prayer that he goes right into after worship he said i came naked from my mother's womb and i'll be naked when i leave the Lord gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job did not sin by blaming God. Man, that's powerful. So what did Job, how did he respond? What is number one? His, how first, did he his first response, it would say this first step, he worshiped God. Man. See, we find out who we, who, who we are in our trials and tribulations. Who or what? do we run to during difficult times? So we find out the real you under pressure. Anybody could be all happy and worship and praise God and say all kinds of great things when you're in the first season, the victorious and blessed season. But in the challenging and warfare season, this is where the true worshipers shine. This is where the true winners or the, the true leaders are developed. Yes, so he worships God. See, it. to worship, it's a prostrate oneself before God as an, as an as of in honor, to humbly come to God with our prayers and submit to oneself. So the first thing he did, he turned to God. Yes. He, he, he did not turn to drugs. He did not turn to drinking. He did not turn to an affair. He did not turn to anger. He did not turn to fear. He did not turn to doubt. He did not turn to suicide. He worshiped. He turned to God. Are there any true worshipers in the house of God? Because true worshipers are warriors. True worshipers are warriors. He's a true worshiper. Amen. I love it. I love the scripture that you put down, Pastor Psalms 95, 6. Yeah. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. I love this statement you put down. Real worshipers worship in the good times and also in the bad times. I yes. love that. See, God is looking for some real worshipers. Yes. They yes. worship, obey him, honor him, yes. and show up to the house of God even when it looks like trouble is surrounding us. I love the song that we're singing, that we always sing lately. It says... This is how we fight our battles. See, real worshipers stand up and stand out in tough times. Anyone can worship God when things are good. It takes a real worshiper to worship when all hell has broken loose. See, Job's, Job, I'm going to read the scripture, but Job didn't let his problems overcome his worship. His worship help him overcome his problems. Love that. That's right. So don't let your problems overcome your worship. Right. Let your worship overcome your problems. Yes. And, and see, 
worshipers, like they worship in good times and bad times. John, God is looking for some real worshipers. Look at John chapter 4, yeah, verse John 23. John 4, 23. But a time is coming, and now is here. It's time right now. Yeah. When the real worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For those are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. <laughs> wow. Man. You know what he's saying here? Man. There's some fake curse. Yes. They're fakers. Yeah. They're not real worshipers. And, and we don't know who the fakers are until trouble hits. The second season reveals the real worshipers. Come on. Is there anybody that could stick through a process when it's hard? Come on. Can you stay in the men's home when things are you're in a second season? You know, in your first season, it was all good. But now the second season, people are getting on your nerves. It's a lot of work. And you're saying, I don't know. I signed up for a whole year. One month sounds like too much to me. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. Right now, you're in a process of growth. Don't you give up on your process. Come on. Are the real worshipers going to show up here on October 18th, no matter what's going on? Come on. God is looking for some real worshipers. Yes, worship I wanna God. Say, I want to say yes. one more thing about real worship. Worshippers. Real worshipers bow down to God alone yes. and not to the enemy. Real worshipers don't bow part time to the devil. The enemy wants us to bow down to the pressures of life, intimidation, temptation, compromise, the patterns of this world, depression, and hopelessness. But listen to this what we bow down to continues to rule over our lives. Wow, it's powerful. You can say so that again, Pat. You got to say that again. What you bow down to, b- bow bow down down to, to. Will, rule, will continue wow. to rule over your life. So under times of difficulty, this is what's happening. The enemy is trying to gain worshipers. Wow. Wow. So what he does, he gives you escapes. You went in as a God worshiper. You came out as a satanic worshiper. And the problem with the whole thing is what you bow down to will rule over you and continue to rule over you. And you know what the worst thing is? You could stay in a season for 20 years and never get out of season number two. That's exactly right. It's just a repeat. Man, and we see a good example of that with Jesus as fast as yeah. Satan comes. He's trying to get Jesus yeah. to bow. He's trying to get Jesus to bow. Look at the scripture, Luke 4, 6 through 8. Then the devil took him up, took Jesus up, yeah. showed him all the kingdom of mankind in a sudden vision, and said to him, I will give you all this power and magnificent magnificence, for it belongs to me, and I could give it to anyone I please. This is the devil speaking. Man. Look at the vocabulary, said, it, magnificence. Yeah. <laughs> and it said, it shall be yours. Here it goes. It shall be yours if you fall down and worship me. Bow down. Man. So Satan was trying to give Jesus a shortcut. There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts to growth. There are no shortcuts to character development. There are no shortcuts to becoming victorious. There are no shortcuts to becoming successful. There are no shortcuts. The devil wants you to bow down to the shortcuts. But what did Jesus end up saying? To, To this, Jesus replied, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. So in a time, difficult time, in season number two, when you're, you're going through difficulties, you're going through challenges, this is the warfare season. What's being declared is who you're going to worship. And I'm, this is what we're saying. It doesn't matter what, devil, it doesn't matter what you bring our way. It doesn't matter if you persecute us. It doesn't matter if you try to shut our church down. You're not going to shut down our worship. We will worship God and serve God no matter how dark it gets. Will the true worshipers please stand yes. up? give Jesus a shout of praise. Come on, let's praise him. You're at your let's house. worship, worship him. Right. Let's continue talking talk about this worship, for worship. Just a I, love, I, I love this statement. Yes. Real worshipers allow God to lead them, I love this, to their next season of victory and blessing. Wow. It takes you to the next season of victory and blessing. So when you're in a season, I want you to get this, a, cha- a challenging and Man. warfare season, you're going to need to be led out of it. God leads you to your next season. It's not like the weather, it just changes automatically. Real worshipers get out of one season with victories. They come out of another, they come out of the season with growth. 
they don't stay stuck in a season. Oh, wow. That's good. Look at Luke chapter 4, verse 8. I love that. No, I'm sorry. No, John, Job chapter 42, verse 12. Now, 42 this is what for 12. Job 42, 12. Now, we're seeing Job. Remember all the trouble? Yeah. Because he's a worshiper, yeah. he was led out of that season right. back into a victorious and blessed season. Wow. Look what happened to Job. Job 42, 12. So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life even more than in the beginning. Wow. Man. So Job had a second half. Yeah. In this first half, nine months, he went through this trial. Yeah. But thank God, another season was coming. Yeah. Whatever you're going through right now is just temporary. Yeah. There's some things I wrote down I want to read. What, what and who we bow down to, we give authority to, and will determine and define the next season of our lives. Real worshipers end up, I mean, end up with God's will and results being done in their lives. Worshippers are moving towards a victorious and blessed season. Worship makes our present difficulties temporary and gives God permission to restore his blessing in our lives. Because Job was a true worshiper, God took him to another level of blessing over his life. He literally got double for his trouble. Worshippers go from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from one level to the next level. That's why you can't stop me because I already know the key to my breakthrough is that I keep on worshiping my God and I don't let my problems overcome my worship. I overcome my worship by, I overcome my problems by worshiping God. Come on, give God just one more praise. Are there any worshipers at home? We worship you, Lord. Doesn't matter what we go through, we are going to worship God. And that's what Job did. So how did Job respond to all this calamity? How did he respond? He worshiped God. Yeah, Number he one. worshiped. He did. <laughs> he showed it. And number two, what did Job do? Here we go. Number two, he trusted God. Wow. He immediately declared his trust in God. He gave me what I had, and I trust him with my life. He is in charge even when my season changes. My faith and trust doesn't change when my circumstances change. Yes. I love that he, statement. He declared, I trust God. He was saying, Man. you know, God gave me everything I ha had yeah. already. He goes, really what I had and the riches I had and the family I had and the animals I have, he created all of it and he wow. blessed me with it. Wow. And he said, and the reality is, naked I came in and naked I'm going to go. What, I'm, what he's saying is, I'm not taking nothing with me anyway, so let's put it all back in perspective. Yeah. And what he was saying is, I trust God no matter what. So those things don't mess with my faith because I didn't trust in those things to make me whole. They were just a blessing. But my true blessing is God. And I want to let you know right now, I know I'm grieving, I'm crying right now because I've lost my family. I've lost a lot of things today, but I want to declare it and I want everybody to know, naked I came in and naked I'll go out. And then he goes like this, praise the Lord, it's going to be okay. Wow, Come on, can anybody have that kind of faith? Yes. Give us that faith, God, tonight. Give me that faith. I love that. I love this statement. Job was actually saying, he was saying this, as long as I have God, I'm good. I like that. Long as I have God, I'm, I'm good. good. That's Man, true. Man, I love that statement. I am trusted in God and I'm content no matter what the circumstance is. I trust God in all circumstances. There isn't a circumstance that I can't overcome and get through with Christ. Yes. I love the scripture you put down, Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Secret. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. Man, wow. Love that. You know, love we it. read that scripture, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And, but we don't read the other part. He's talking about a season two. I'm in the second season. Uh, I'm going through some challenging times. Uh, it's challenging. There's a lot of warfare. But let me declare this. I can get through any season through Christ 
who strengthens me. Because you can't conquer me because you can't conquer the one that's in me. Because the one that's in me is greater than anything I'm facing. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm good. I overcome. And I'm content because I know how this all ends. It's a win. I love it. I love this statement. When we place our trust in God, he will straighten it all out. Trusting that God keeps him in charge. Right. How many want God in charge? I love that. Proverbs 3, 5 says this. Trust in, trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him. And he will make your path straight and smooth. I love this in the Amplified. Removing obstacles that block your way. I love that. Man, so the scripture is saying those that trust God, yeah. this is what God's saying. I'll work it all out. I'll smooth it all out. It doesn't matter what's, it doesn't matter what obstacles are in your way. I will remove them because I'm in charge. This is what worship with praise does and trust in God does. It keeps God in charge. Come on, when God's in charge, he works it all out for good. I love that. And I love the statement you put down and this is what Job did. Our trust in God must not only be in our hearts, but in our mouths. Right. Job began to worship and put his trust in God with his mouth. I love that. Psalms 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my impenetrable shield. My heart trusts with an unwavering confidence in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices and with my song I shall thank him and praise him. We got to do it also with our mouths, not just our hearts. You know, I love that. When we talk about your mouths and your heart working together... This is what, what I wrote down. What is in our hearts and declared through our mouths affects our emotions, yeah. perspectives, and outcomes. Right. After a declaration of our trust in God comes joy and celebration or joy yeah. Yeah. and results. Yeah. Just because the circumstance hasn't changed doesn't mean our emotions and outlook can't change. Wow. Just because your situation doesn't change doesn't mean you can't have joy before it changes. Are there any ones that anybody that trusts God and can have some joy and praise God with their mouths and their hearts until the change happens in, come on, in their lives? Amen. I love it. So again, let's review. We got two more. How did Job respond to challenging times? Number one, he worshiped God. Yes. Number two, he trusted God. Right. Here's number two. And we're going to also give you number four. Number this, it, how many is enjoying this tonight? Isn't this good? And, and not only keep it to yourself, share it with somebody. Share it with a family or friend that's struggling right now. That's in a challenging time. Number three, Job, he praised God. He said in the scripture, praise the name of the Lord. What does praise mean? I know we talked about worship. What's the difference? What does well, praise we're worship, mean? We're, we're worshiping God. We're loving him. We're showing our devotion to him. Yeah. We're adoring him. Praise is this, is now magnifying him. It means to make greater or more important. It means to increase the size of. So what happens? When we are praising God, we are magnifying God, which magnifies our faith to match up with the size of our problems. It isn't that our God is too small. It is our faith and declarations that are too small that hinders the, his power from operating in our lives. So praise has to do with what you're magnifying, what you're making big. And we know what you're magnifying by what you're talking about. That's right. That's right. Some people are magnifying the enemy, yeah. magnifying COVID, yeah. magnifying the problems. Right. Oh my gosh, it's so hard. I don't know if I'm going to get through this. It's so difficult. The challenges are overwhelming. Oh, That's the no. straw that broke the camel's back. You have all these sayings that destroy you. Yeah, Instead of getting some praise in your mouth. Yeah. And instead of magnifying the devil and magnifying her and magnifying him or magnifying what they said, why don't you magnify what God says and magnify who God is? And when you magnify who God is, it magnifies your faith to match up with your problem. And I love that. So Job praised God and he said, if you go back to the scripture, praise the name of the Lord. I love the statement you put down. God has given us Jesus, the name above every, every name. name. Job did what he should all of us do. He put the name of God over everything he was facing. By praising his name, he was saying, I trust you no matter what, and I place you over this difficult situation or season that I am in. 
Philippians 2.9 says this. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every other name. And I love that. So Jesus' name, when you place it above your whatever you're facing, Jesus' name is more powerful, is above and more powerful than any name that we're facing. And everything you're facing has a name. It, it's above your failure, above sin, above rejection, above addiction, above abuse, above fear, above depression, above poverty, above lack, above cancer, above sickness, above COVID, above loss, above shame, above your past, above your past mistakes. It doesn't matter what you're facing. God has given us the name that's above every name. And all you need to do is put the name of Jesus right over that situation. And whatever name you have over it is what's going what's to have the last word. Come on. Can anybody praise the name of Jesus? We praise the name of Jesus. Praise and exalt his name. See. I love that. Praise attracts the presence and power of God into our circumstances. Yeah. We see this, a great example, Paul and Silas are in jail. Look at Acts chapter 16, verse 24. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Okay, so now they, they just got whooped too. Just got whooped, got beat. Beat. Yep. First preaching. For preaching the gospel. For preaching. Yeah. They didn't get whooped and beaten for doing some crime. For preaching, the for preaching helping people. Then after that, they get, they get beat. They get put in prison. This, we're talking about a season number two situation. That's right. And they, they get put in the inner dungeon. I mean, they got put in the lowest part yeah. of the dungeon. Like, we're going to put you in the darkest, ugliest, smelliest place. This is where everything drips down. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So if someone was upstairs doing something they shouldn't be doing, oh, oh, oh. they'll just flow right down. Oh. So they were living in feces. Oh, my gosh. In urine. Yeah. And then they were locked up. I, I'm claustrophobic. I, oh, yeah, I couldn't do it. I'd be done. I'd have been done. Locked up. I'd have been done. I'd be like, oh, yeah, let me go. Yeah, I would have died. I would have died. I would have been done. I would have passed out. Yeah, I mean, I'm so, but they were sitting there. They, what happened? They got what? They, they got in, in the dungeon. The jailer clamped them in the inner in the dungeon. Stocks. Yeah. But look what praise does. Praise attracts the presence. Right. Around midnight, mm -hmm. Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. They began to worship and praise God at midnight in the middle of that dungeon cell. Because praise attracts the presence and power of God into our circumstances. This is what they were, they were responding in a way praisers and worshipers respond. Everyone was listening because they've never heard anybody start praising and singing and magnifying God in prison. Because most people do the opposite. They'll start cussing, blaming. I want to see a lawyer. What's up? I didn't do nothing. You got me up, up in here. I want to talk to my lawyer. Come on, Black Lives Matter. Come on, come talk to me. All these things were happening and he was there. And it, was, it wasn't a complete injustice. Yeah. And he could have called on, on every organization to help him. Yeah. But he didn't. This one, I want you to understand. He did not call on any organization. Oh. This is what he was saying. He was calling on the name of Jesus. And he was saying, come on, the Republicans can't help me here. The Democrats can't help me here. No, none of these groups can help me. But there's a name that I know, that I know can help me, that resurrected from the dead. And we're going to go ahead and call on that name. And you know why this is important now? Because we're in a time that we're dealing with so many issues. We got to make sure, yes, we deal with the issues. But don't you forget to include the one that can change your seasons and turn your situation around. Let's do this. Let's make sure his praise is continually in our mouth, in our Facebook, in our Instagram. We never stop praising God. Give God just one more praise. We worship God. Job worshiped God. He trusted God. He praised God. And here's number four in closing tonight. He did not blame God. Right. Man, we're so quick to blame people, God, friends, boss, spouse, you name it. We'll blame the dog. We'll blame anyone for our mistakes and even troubles that we're facing. I love this statement. One of the greatest temptations 
we will ever face in a challenging season is the temptation to complain and blame. Right. That's the greatest temptation. I, that's exactly right. See, and when we're complaining, it is the same thing as blaming God. Oh, wow. When we're complaining, we're saying, God, you don't know what you're doing. And God says, I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm preparing you. I'm building you. You can have a greater testimony. You got to trust me. Let endurance have its perfect work. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. You're going to come out with double for your trouble. I am right, right now getting you ready for a great promotion. I'm great at getting you ready for great leadership. I'm getting you ready to teach others how to overcome. But you got to get through this season. You got to get through season number two to have a repeat of season number one. So look at Exodus 16, 8. Exodus so when 16, we're complaining, it's the same thing as blaming yeah. God. Then Moses continued, you will know it is the Lord when he gives you meat each evening and more than enough bread each morning. He is really the one you are complaining about. Not us. We are nobodies. But the Lord has heard your complaints. Wow. Man. So we're complaining about people. We're complaining about and we're complaining about circumstances. God's saying, you're really complaining about me. Hmm. Let's think about that. Complaining attracts the spirit of yeah. destruction and keeps us in the season we're in. Wow. You'll never get out of a season. Yeah. You'll never get out of a season you're in until you learn how to praise God and be thankful for every season you're in. As long as you're complaining, you are stuck. And I'm wondering who, you're, who are we blaming? Yeah. What are we complaining about? Because as long as you're complaining and blaming, you are your worst enemy. And instead of attracting the presence of God and attracting his power and attracting his blessing, you're actually attracting demons of destruction. Yeah. So let's read that. Yeah, you see that scripture in 1 Corinthians 10, 10. And do not complain as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Wow. So they complained and they yeah. were what? Destroyed. So destroyed complaining, pain. I want you to, complaining is almost like suicide. Yeah, yeah, it is. You're yeah, literally is. turning yeah. against yourself and attracting demons in to destroy everything you're complaining about. And what you're complaining about will be destroyed. Wow. Because the spirit of Satan is attracted to complainers. Just like God is attracted to the praises of his people, demons are attracted by the complaining of the people. So you got to be careful what's coming out of your mouth in a difficult situation. Lord, forgive us for complaining. <laughs> forgive us, God. Let's end it with this one. Only after we take back every negative thing we have said will there be total restoration. Wow. We see that with Job. There's a time in your life that you got to realize, man, I've been complaining. I've been negative. I've been talking about people. I've been gossiping. You know. What you're doing is trapping yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's people that will talk about everybody. Yeah. Yeah. For what? You're trapping yourself. trapping yourself. You know, that's why the Bible says even bless your enemies. Yeah. Because when you're blessing your enemies, yeah. this is what happens. You get blessed. Yeah. That's right. What you're putting out is coming back. When you're judging right. others, you just bring it back on yourself. That's why I feel sorry for people I will talk about, about even leadership. I'm like, oh, don't do it. Don't do it. please don't do it. You're going to mess your life up. And there's some people, and what I've realized, people that are going nowhere, all they could do is talk about other people. People that are going somewhere, you know what they talk about? Vision. They don't talk about people. I don't got time to talk about people because I got too many things to do. I got too many places to go. And I got too many devils to stomp out. I love it. I love it. But look, I, but, but this is what happens. After, but you got to take it back. You got to take it back. Look at the verse in Job, Job 40. This is what Job did, Job 42, 6. I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. Job 42, 10. When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. Wow. Double for your trouble. Man, double for his trouble. Wow. So we see here. He said, well, why did, what did Job take back? Because remember, at the beginning, he didn't blame God. Yeah. But as time went by, he fell into the temptation yeah. to say some negative things. Yeah. And then God checked him. Yeah. And he says, you know, Job, you've been saying some stuff you got to take back. Right. 
Because I want to restore your life and I want to get you out of this season and you've been in for nine months. But if you don't take back what you said, you will stay stuck in this for the rest of your life. So you got to renounce what you said because what you're saying is trapping you. And this is a really good time for us to kind of look at the, our conversations, what we've been saying about our difficult times. Because part of, getting, of going through a challenging time is getting, uh, getting to a point that you learn how to talk, you learn how to walk, and you learn how to respond. That you don't allow the enemy to take over your conversations, take over your emotions, take over your responses, take over your life, and take over and determine your destiny. You can be stuck for like 40 years yeah, in a wilderness, right. walking around in circles, because you never renounce your complaining. That's right. They complained for 40 years. Going around in circles, just because you're getting older doesn't mean you're making progress. The only thing that's, getting, that's increasing is your age, but doesn't mean necessarily your maturity is increasing. Your effectiveness is increasing. You could be in a men's home for... A whole year, two years, three years, four years if you want. But it doesn't mean you're growing. Wow. You might as well go ahead and learn the lessons as fast as you can. Yeah. So you could graduate to the next level as fast as you can. And, and, and some of the people that you have in your life, they are there. And I know they're hard and they're difficult and they're challenging. But they're there to help you grow. Yeah. Amen. But they're not supposed to be there for the rest of your life. You're supposed to overcome to go to another level. That's right. That's right. So God wants to take you there. But before we end, yes. I, I just love this teaching here. Yeah, I, love I love this teaching that just talks about these four things. You know, yeah. I worship God. I'm a worshiper no matter what. You're not going to stop me from worshiping. Yeah. I'm going to show up to the house of God and yeah. continue obeying, bowing yeah. down to him. I trust God. Trust God. I, I can do all Great. things through Christ. And when I trust God, he'll work all my details out. And I praise God. Yes. I choose not to magnify my mess, to magnify my master, my Lord and Savior. And then I'm just choosing. I'm done with blaming and complaining. That's just not going to be me. For me to live in the past is to stay in the past and repeat the past. I'm done repeating my old life. I'm ready for a new beginning. So today, things can change. Just like Job was restored through a confession. Just one confession. He repented of his sins, of his lack of trust, of his comments that were negative. He turned to God, and then God restored twice as much as he ever had. So he was the richest, richest, richest man. And God restored it. And God will restore. Do you know why it ends with God restoring? Because God specializes in restoring. And what it means is the circumstances in life, we're not going to change this whole world, but God can change your world. That's how it works. You know, the whole world might be in a mess, but it doesn't mean you need to be in a mess. Families might be, you know, all over the place, but God can restore yours. Yes, that's right. Your kids might, you know, might, there's kids out there that aren't serving God, and maybe your kids aren't serving God, but it doesn't mean that God can't bring them back to the border so they can serve God. Yes, there's amen. people in poverty all over the world and addicted, but it doesn't mean you need to stay in poverty and addicted. That's right. Because you serve a God that restores Thank you, Lord. and makes you new. Thank he goes, I want to take you to a season of victory and blessing. Yes. And even if you're in a challenging and warfare season, don't you worry about it. Because you're going to come out victorious. Right. Pastor Robert, yes. can you lead someone out yes. there to say, you know what? I, I'm ready to surrender my yeah. trust to God. I'm going yes. to trust in God. I want to give my life to Jesus. Yes. I not only want to overcome in this life, I want to overcome for eternity. Yes, let's do and it. this is what, how good God is. Yes, right now you're watching right now. Wherever you're at, you bow your head and close your eyes. You're at home. Bow your head and close your eyes for a moment. This is you and God right now. Part of prayer is this, is letting God intervene in now. On your behalf and some of us are watching right now we haven't made Jesus the Lord of our life because here's the main question if you were to die today where would you go you talk about a challenge in time and I do funerals all the time and I'm always asking did they give their life to God were they saved I'm asking you that question are you saved do you know God if this were your last day on earth do you know where you would go if you're saying, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want Jesus to forgive me of all of my sins. I want to make sure if I die today that I would go straight to heaven. Every head bow, every eyes closed. If you want to give Jesus your life, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I repent of my sins and I turn to you. 
Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross. I receive forgiveness of all the wrong that I have done. Jesus, come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am a child of God. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Today, I am saved. I am born again. I am on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer, go to igotsaved.com. We want to help you with your walk with Christ. And even this Friday, you could get baptized. Show up at 6 o'clock. We're going to have a class if you haven't taken that. And we're doing baptism. But, Pastor, yes. I'm going to yes, close I, in prayer. I want to also end it for everyone right now that you're going through a difficult time. Yes. You're in season number two. Yes. God doesn't want you to stay in that season. Yes. So let's go ahead and lift up the name above every name yes. and give your cares to him. Yes, God. God loves you. He cares for you. The Bible says be anxious. Don't be worried about anything. Let's give it to God. Let's trust God. Let's just say this. No matter what, God, I'm going to trust you. And I know you'll work it out. He's going to work it out. Are you ready to give your problems, your situations, your season to the Lord? It's just a season. It's temporary. Let's learn. Are you ready to learn? Are you ready to grow? Are you ready to welcome these difficult seasons? so that you can grow and learn through it. Don't complain. Thank God for them. Because it's through those seasons that you get promoted. It's through those seasons that God adds to your life, increases good in your life. It's going to be okay. Let's give it to God. Repeat it. Say, say, Jesus, I give you all of my cares. I give you my finances. Set me free all, from all depression, all addiction all fear, all anxiety, I surrender it to you. I trust you as my Lord, as my Savior, as my provider, as my protector. And I believe in your word, that your word says, all things will work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. I love you, Lord. I'm a worshiper. And I thank you. This season I'm in, I'm going to be promoted after it. I am excited about the next level that's happening now through this challenging time I'm in. I trust you, Lord. You'll work it all out. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. God bless you. See you Friday. Friday night. Fire baptism. Friday. Baptism. Sign up for baptism. God bless you. Love you guys. God bless you guys. Hello, everyone. What a powerful message. And on behalf of the Wayward Outreach, we just want to say we love you. But most importantly, God loves you. And if that word spoke to you today, make sure you help us get this message out by liking, commenting, and sharing this YouTube channel. God bless you all. See you next time.